the wall. Well, this is my old Honda lawnmower. As you can see, the wheels on it are pretty much worn out completely. They're completely smooth at this point. Both rear tires are the same way. Front tires have a little bit of tread on them. The problem with Honda mowers is these are made of plastic and I hate plastic wheels. So in order to replace these wheels, you got to buy one for the left, one for the right. Each one runs about $32, $33. So with tax and shipping and everything, you're probably looking at 70 bucks just to fix the rear wheels. These are the drive wheels and that's why they wear out faster. What I'm going to attempt to do is to add rubber retread onto these wheels. Simply because if I replace them at 70 bucks with plastic, they're probably going to do this again. I don't even know that this mower is worth $70 anymore. It still runs very good. But I think that I'm going to run into the same problem if the mower continues to go into the future. And I'm getting a lot of slippage right now. Uh, I have a slight incline on my yard and I'm noticing the motor, the mower is starting to turn sideways as I'm doing my cuts. And that does not help at all. So retreading, just like 18 wheelers do with their tires, seems to be the best option for me. And what I'm gonna use is a bike tire. I got this one uh, at the store. This is just a mountain bike tire. It's a Schwinn 26 inch. It should be plenty to do both rear tires. And the idea behind this is we're gonna cut it uh, so it fits retread the top, use contact cement uh, to adhere to the wheel and probably just secure the endpoints with some machine screws. Well, in prepping the tire, obviously it comes like this all stretched out. It's very wide, so it's gonna need to be cut. So we'll get this thing open. You can see that is very wide. If we look at it compared to the tire, you can see we're going to have to chop off quite a bit. But it seems that I'm just going to have to chop it right about where the tread is. All this excess, basically the sidewall of the bike tire, we're going to cut off and cut it exactly to the width of the lawnmower tire. I would think the best thing to use here is a pair of tin snips because there is a metal beading in here and regular scissors definitely will not go through it. But if you got a pair of these, it should get right through it. As soon as you get through the bead anyway. And it is tough bead. may require a few snips. There we go. So now I can continue through relatively easy until you get to the second bead, which is just a ton of fun. Well, once I got a cut, I'll show you. All right, I'm through the bead. And what I'm using at this point, these were just shears that I have. They seem to work a little bit better uh, just on the rubber part because there really isn't any uh, metal coming through here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim along the edge of each knobby because that seems to be the perfect fit. I will do this on both sides until I have my full strip done. All right, these are now cut. This is basically what it's gonna look like for the top of your tread. You can see it pretty much fits right as I cut along that exact area on the edge of the knobby. And when I lay it on, that is pretty much what it's gonna look like. So now you gotta cut it to size and you wanna make certain that your edges are very flat. These weren't very flat going through because when I had to go through the initial bead, it got a little tough and I don't think I cut it all that good. So I'm going to try to pick a spot here right in the middle and try to cut in between the knobbies. Maybe I'll go right here. 
Well, actually, I can see this end is fatter than what's in here, so let's take a little more off. Right about there. That is a pretty smooth and straight end. So now I'm gonna to wanna to measure this out exactly. Wrap it around the tire the whole way and figure out exactly where the overlap is. Wherever that overlap is, you're gonna to wanna to mark it so that you know where to make your cut. So, what do you know? It's almost identically landing right on the knobby. So I'm gonna cut across right after this knobby and it should be fitting pretty good. All right, so once I've trimmed it exactly to how I want it to fit, obviously there, if I let it go, there's a little bit of a gap. So this is rubber and you're gonna to wanna to stretch it. And when you attach it to this wheel with the contact cement, you're gonna put a little pressure on it. So it fits exactly where you want it to fit. In the end, we'll probably put machine screw on each side so that it stays pretty much intact. But that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. Let's get onto the cement. All right, for the contact cement, this is just uh, DAP weld wood, and you really should shake it up. But the way the contact cement works, and I mean, it should create a very weatherproof bond, is we're gonna brush some on this side, and then we're gonna brush some all the way around the wheel itself. And then you have to let it dry for about 15 minutes, and it makes it very tacky. As soon as this, connects with the tire, it is going to be a very solid fix. Downside is you've only got really one shot at this. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go slow, there's no rush. After 15 minutes when it's tacky, you probably have up to an hour and a half, something like that to actually put it together. But once the two touch each other, it's gonna be very hard to rip it apart. So you're gonna to wanna to make absolutely certain that you've lined yourself up pretty good. Uh, all these come with an applicator brush, and I don't think you're going to need to use a lot. Probably a very thin coat is all you're going to need to make life easy. I think if you just pour a bead out on the tire itself and then brush it in is probably going to be the easiest thing to do. Kind of like that. And using rubber gloves will save you a lot because if you get this on your skin, it's not going to be too fun. But I'll brush these two up and I'll come back. Okay, so the wheel and the back of the bike tire are now pretty tacky. So now we're just going to join them. Take your time and try to get it exact. I would use gloves to stop the contact cement from hitting your skin because it's just not easy to wash it off your hands. But, I'm gonna spin the wheel around. edges on there and it fits pretty good there is a little gap there and probably what I'll do is fill that gap with a little extra cement and then when that's done we'll secure it with two screws to make sure that these edges don't come up over the course of the next year all right screws are in this is down pretty good so now you can see that it's pretty even all the way around. It doesn't really matter if your cuts aren't exact, simply because it's not like this thing's going around at huge RPMs. They go very slow. So if it's a little bit off, don't worry about it. Again, this is a fix just to get rubber on the tire and also 
not to have to get new plastic wheels at 70 bucks that are probably going to fail. I'll do the other side and then we'll take it for a test run. Well, it's been a few days since the retreading, so I decided to take the mower out and see how it works today. It's a little bit wet, which is good because if you're going to lose traction, today's going to be the day. And it worked fantastically. Uh, no slipping and sliding. Feels like there's a brand new um, uh, traction in there. Uh, so I know the cables are very good. One thing that didn't work all that well was the contact cement. It did come up a little bit and it came up on the tire side, which is probably because they're, when they make these tires, they spray some kind of release agent on the inside of that machine that makes the tires. So what I did was I put a few extra screws in. This is where the two pieces meet. And you turn it, you see there's one right there, there's one right there, one right there. So every four or five inches, I put in another screw and that completely keeps it right in place. Uh, if it lifts up on the edges a little bit, that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about it, or you can try some other type of adhesive, but um, this works good for me. I hope you all give it a try.